Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Hearthstone at the Trading Post. I am your host as always, Greg, also known as Stoos, so look around this video and find all the different ways you can connect with both myself and the Trading Post. And today is Wednesday, and of course that means another wonderful tavern brawl is upon us. And what do you know, this video is actually being released at a reasonable time, and the reason for this? I got an adult snow day! Yay! Just yesterday here in Denver it was upwards of 75 degrees, but less than 24 hours later it's transformed into a snow-covered house of horrors, and I can't even legally leave the house without four-wheel drive and snow tires. But that means I get to bring this tavern brawl to you in near immediate fashion following its launch. And today we have an evil exchange. Kel'Thuzad and Rafam are competing to see who the superior end boss is. So take a side and battle for evil excuse me for evil supremacy. And I have been assigned the role of Rafam, the supreme archaeologist. I think is what he just said. So let's take a look at my starting cards and see what I should keep and what I should get rid of. I would love to keep Entomb because that is a phenomenal card, but it's a six cost. So you go back into the deck for now. Shard of Sulfuras. Deal 5 damage to all characters. That could be very nice to have, so I'll keep you, especially for zero cost. Forgotten Torch, I would rather get a low cost minion. So Forgotten Torch, go bye bye. Slithering Archer, you can survive, because you're at least a viable turn 1 play. And that is what we're looking at. I draw a Shadow Word Death and a Hikari Blood Goblet, which will transform a minion into a 2-1 Pit Snake. So the opponent skips turn 1. I'll go ahead and send a nice little greetings to him too, because it's being polite is nice. And I have drawn Uncover Staff Piece. Add another piece to your hero power. That is very nice to have, and it is worth skipping turn 1 to be able to bust that guy out on turn 2. So let's take a look at the heroes, and we'll see why Uncover Staff Piece is so valuable as we do that. But we will start with my opponent, Kel'Thuzad. He is a 30 health with 30 armor, and a 2 cost hero power, Necromancy. Resurrect a minion that has died this game. Make that a friendly minion, and a random friendly minion at that. So, that's something to keep in mind. You don't want to lead off by killing a powerful minion of his, because that means he can just resurrect it again for two cost. You want to clobber up his graveyard, so to speak, with worthless minions, kind of like the Mad Scientist. So for my turn, we'll just go ahead and play the coin and the uncover staff piece. And... I don't like secrets, so we'll just... Eh, never mind thought about transforming him into a 2-1 Pit Snake, but I don't think this is the time to use that card. So let's move over to the friendly side. Take a look at Rafam. 60 health, 0 armor, and now a staff 2 pieces, the new upgraded hero power. Add a random minion to your hand, it costs 2 less. The original hero power was add a random minion of 5 cost or less to your hand. So you can progressively, through cards, upgrade your hero power as Rafam and make it better and better as the game goes along. So here we go. Turn three, three mana to work with, and now I think would be the time to use Hikari Blood Goblet. So we'll drop that out on my opponent. And we'll drop out the Slithering Archer to eliminate both of them. Unfortunately, it does put a secret onto the board for my little undead opponent. And I think that's really all that I can do on that turn. And I would love to tell you this is my first game of this Tavern Brawl, but unfortunately I cannot. I started off the day playing against an individual who hasn't yet learned how to push the end turn button, and there was no way in hell I was going to be able to fill that needlessly long battle end to end with mindless babble to entertain you lovely masses. And just throwing it out there, these games even without an opponent that doesn't know how to push the end turn button, they can be very, very, very time consuming anyway. So it just was not worth it. But back here on this turn, I would like to use Slithering Archer to eliminate both of my enemy minions from both of my opponent's minions. But we'll just go ahead and take out the Spectral Spider first, so I can eliminate all three of those. 
Again, that'll get another secret out there, which is a bummer. And I have two mana left, so I can either kill one of my minions or go face with Dark Bomb. Or I can just use Staff Two Pieces. That seems like the intelligent move. So we get Floating Watcher. Not a terribly wonderful minion to have if you're not a Warlock, because I don't expect to take too much damage on my own turn. But you never know, it could happen. And especially with Floating Watcher being a 4-4, it makes Shard of Sulphuras be completely worthless with Floating Watcher, because it'll just kill him. So that's kind of dumb. Turn 5, however, we are continuing to plug away here. I have a couple of options now. I can get rid of Sludge Belcher, obviously using this card, my Shard of Sulphuras. But then both of my minions die, so that's dumb. I can use Keeper of Alderman to set someone's attack and health to 3-3, either buff one of my players or debuff his. Or I can just hit my hero power and get a new card, and I think that would be the thing to do right now. Give a minion taunt. So I think that is what I would like to do. We'll give my floating watcher taunt. We'll do two damage to the Sludge Belcher, and we'll just end the turn there. In my previous dealings with Kel'Thuzad, I have seen one of his secrets be Counterspell. So I'll keep that in mind when playing these spells, knowing that they might not necessarily continue to exist. So here we go. No minions with 5 attack or more, so I still can't play that spell. Deal 3 damage to all enemies. That will at least eliminate all of that, and actually it'll completely wipe the board for me. So I think that would be the thing to do here. We'll start out with the Keeper of Alderman to bring you back up to a 3-3. Three, three. We'll go ahead and try our luck with that, because if this is Counterspell, it doesn't matter. But it's not, so that's phenomenal. Opponent's board is cleared. And there we go. At least I only lost a Slithering Archer with that Vaporize. So I'll take a look. I may as well go ahead and use Staff of Two Pieces again. Or sorry, Staff of Two Pieces. And end my turn. Azure Drake, draw a card, plus one spell damage. That could be nice to have, or it could get me killed. We'll find out. Resurrect gets Gluth back up on the board. Another secret is played. And then a Haunted Creeper. So one of the reasons this game seems to take so long, especially early on here, early on a Wednesday morning, is all the players are trying to still learn how to play all of their cards. And that makes a lot of sense, because I don't think anyone has had Shard of Sulphuras before. Nobody's gotten to play with the mechanic of Staff Two Pieces before. So there's a lot of learning to be done all around. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and use Staff Two Pieces again to lead off my turn. We'll see what I draw. Restore two health to all friendly characters. You'll wind up with three health, so you'll die regardless. You'll be able to survive crashing into there. And I still have a Dark Bomb to work with, potentially. So we'll lead off with Dark Bomb. And there's the counter spell that we were waiting for. So, what we'll do instead is just go face, deal 5 damage to all characters, clear out the board again, and we'll put out an Azure Drake. And the turn ends. I drew a card of Steel Sentinel. Minion can only take one damage at a time, so that's kind of nice to have. But if he only has minions that can do one damage, I guess it doesn't really matter. And it looks like he did wind up with two copies of Spectral Spider in his hand. It's the only way he would have wound up with any Spectral Spiders in his hand. So now this is a tough decision with Lotheb out there. Uncover Staff Piece will waste my entire turn. Same with Shadow Word Death, and same with the other Shadow Word Death. But I would like to start plugging away on this board, 
so we'll lead with that. His little ghoul will die. Clear out the board, he gets two copies of it, which is a bummer. But that's all right with me, I suppose. So now Lotheb, four health. I don't think it would be terribly wise to waste an entire turn. But at the same time, I can maintain board control by eliminating Lotheb with a spell. So we'll just go ahead and drop an eight cost spell there. Hopefully my Azure Drake can survive another turn so that he can continue poking along. And that is a card I hadn't seen before. Darkness Call, summon two random Max Aramis bosses and trigger their battle cries. So Anubrakhan does not have a battle cry. Instructor Resuvius does, and he gives that 5-2 massive rune blade to my opponent. And now we're back along to my turn with a nasty looking board across from me. So first things first, we'll upgrade my hero power. Excuse the little voice crack there. I may as well use the upgraded hero power to add a random legendary minion to my hand that will cost four less. So I start out with Mech Engineer Thermaplug, who I cannot play this turn. But I would like to get rid of Anubrakhan, so we'll put my other three of my last four mana on Mr. Rakan. And we'll go ahead and end the turn there. The plus side of being really either one of these characters is the fact that you have essentially 60 health. So it's a lot more forgiving. You can take more damage to the face and you can spend more turns with a non-favorable board. And as this board is stacked up nastily against me here, that is a very wonderful fact. I don't think I have a way that is correct. I don't have a way to clear anything out immediately on this turn. So we'll go ahead and just hit the hero power again. See what we have there. If we have at least four other minions deal four damage from Gormok the Impaler. I don't have at least four other minions. So you don't have a whole lot of value to me right now. Whenever an enemy minion dies, summon a Leper Gnome. You'll never get to see the light of day because my Exna will just destroy you straight off. So with 8 mana to work with, I am just going to find a way to use it all up. We go with the Ethereal Conjurer because I would like to find a spell that will be worthwhile. And I think Blizzard is that spell that will be worthwhile. And to give him more minions to waste his time crashing into, we'll put out both Gormok the Impaler because still, despite the fact that he doesn't get to use his battle cry, he is a 4-4-0 cost, and you can't really argue with that. So now I'm not terribly worried. I would like my Exna to crash into preferably Ethereal Conjurer, because then that will get my Exna low enough in health to where Blizzard will eliminate her, but I'm not so lucky. Instead, the damage will go all around to where basically nothing will die from my Blizzard. And another Instructor Resuvius puts fat damage into my opponent's hand, and this is not a very pretty sight for me. So, now these are kind of long odds. At the end of your turn, replace all other minions with new ones of the same cost. So let's go for that. Eliminate my Exna. This could come back to bite me because Instructor Resuvius is a rather low power 8 cost minion. But, I have made my bed, so now we will lay in it. After I make a decision about Staff of Origination. We'll put Mech Engineer Thermoplug out there anyway, and we will let this happen. So I get one of the most irritating minions in the game, Nose Dormu, 
So let's start planning my next turn right now. He's just gonna go straight face. I think he'll have the damage to kill me, but will he be able to get it off in time? Yes, he will, and that puts this disappointing Tavern Brawl matchup to an end. I guess you can't win them all, and my quickie takeaway summary of this is that early game power belongs to Kel'Thuzad, while Rathom can catch up late game with a fully enhanced Staff of Origination. Unfortunately, sometimes you wind up in too big a hole to be able to make your comeback, as was the case here. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all of these Hearthstone videos and all the other excellent content coming out of the Trading Post. And we'd love to hear from you. Tell me about your Tavern Brawl experience down in the comments below. Did you have the same bad luck with no late game comeback as Rafam? Let me know. And while you're down there, check out the description to find out all the other places and ways to contact us all here at the Trading Post. But for now, I think this video has gone on far too long. So thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you all Monday.